Yes, Arthur, sir. We are ready to go. Okay. Good evening to all. I, Dr. K.B. Rathod, Head of Mechanical Engineering Department of RNG Patel Institute of Technology, heartily welcomes you all on the 69th webinar of the college. And also, it gives me immense pleasure to announce that this is the 14th webinar of the Mechanical Engineering Department. To deliver this 13th webinar of Mechanical Engineering, we have with us Professor Asis Kaur from B.H. Gardi College to deliver expert speech on friction star welding. He did MTech in the SIM from Nirma University. And to know more about him, I would like to request Dr. Vikas Joshi to give brief introductions about Mr. Asis Kaur. Over to you, Joshi, sir. Thank you, Rathod, sir. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, Professor Asis Kaur. Professor Asis Kaur has completed his MTech from Nirma University. He has completed his project uh, under the guidance of Professor K.M. Patel, sir, and N.M. Gatia, sir. He is serving B.H. Gardi Institute uh, since that six year. And I would like to invite uh, Professor Asis Kaur to start the presentation. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Rathod, sir, and Joshi, sir. Now I start my screen. Now it is uh, visible to everyone. Uh, <laughs> myself, I am working as a professor at uh, Department of Engineering College and Technology. And since in this, I would like to give you the hint of the uh, things we to building nothing but we can join to similar or dissimilar kinds of metal with use of a heat source and with use of filler metal so what do you mean by the as opposed to the bracing and soldering which do not melt the base metal welding is a heat process we melt base material with the it is, it is, we can get the high heat cause oiled pool of a material which cools the form of, of a joints. Can be in the parent metal process can also be used to protect the heat or by the heat cell. It can also be laid base to protect the melted or the filler metal from becoming containment or oxidized. This is related to the welding. Now, as we are knowing that the welding can be divided into the five major uh, welding types. First one is the gas welding. Second one is the resistance gas welding. Third one is the arc welding. Fourth one, solid state welding. And the last one, newer welding processes. So, gas welding can also be subdivided into in welding, acid, oxygen, or in the case System, port welding, welding, or protection welding. We can subdivide it into the arc welding, carbon, metal, arc, plasma, metal inert gas means MIG welding, and the tungsten inert gas means the TIG welding. Now, another uh, form of build new component. Building so currently divided into the major type: atomic diffusion, explosion, friction. So within today's session, uh, we can go on through the glimpse uh, related to the building. Uh, 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 sir. Sir. For, uh, to As is, sir. Like what it would so I want to 
did uh, uh, as, my hope, as it, sir hello uh, as it, sir uh, friction stir we can so what this is uh, what can say about friction stir building it for other world we want to find optimum parameter processes are there out of this one of the to discuss in today's session and definitely definitely for the same for the same we can go on through the uh, different kinds of the uh, microstructure analysis and how it can be work uh, uh, through it that we need to go on through it so now uh, starting with the first uh, of uh, objective so what is the objective of, of this particular study and that we needed to understand that the design and development of the experimental setup tool and the workpiece for air and immerse friction stir welding now uh, first question arise in your mind what is the difference between the air fsw and the immerse fsw so what is uh, air fsw then uh, the sum of the application of the friction stir welding which is uh, used in working in the air and if we are doing the welding similar type in the underwater which is called as the immerse fsw now uh, within this session we would try to know we would try to know about the multiple parameter or the response methodology of the taguchi based gray relational analysis for a friction stir welding and in the immerse friction stir welding uh, also said, we want to Yes, sir. Uh, sir, can you please uh, full screen carry this as light? Ne, can't get fonts. No, no, I just. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir. Now it's clear. Now it is sir. Okay. Oh. okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. You can continue, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, so as we all uh, going through the different types of the welding process, this uh, friction stir welding is a one of the solid state joining process along with ultrasonic diffusion and the explosive, which are also called as a solid state welding. So friction stir welding is a one type of a solid state uh, joining process. From that, uh, we can see into the figure that uh, two similar or dissimilar kinds of the plate can join together without using a filler metal in the case of the friction stir welding so how we can define the fsw process so cylindrical solder tool along with a profile probe is rotated and fed at a constant transverse rate into the joint of two plates which had previously claimed so for that we need to design a tool we need to design a workpiece and we need to design a clamping device so definitely uh, this process can be uh, done into the trial in lathe machine as well as in milling machine. Definitely it is a square plate. So milling machine or VMC machine is better compared to the lathe machine to do the particular experiment, right? So here in the figure, we can show that uh, the basic two sides are there, advancing side and retracting side. So if the two plates we can put together, whether it is a similar material or dissimilar material, that is a different thing. But if we want to join it at that time, tool can rotate into the anti-clockwise. Then we can say that the nugget uh, size is in advancing side. Right hand side is our advancing side and left hand side it is our retracting side. But if the tool is rotated into the clockwise, then advancing side and retracting side both are reverse back also this figure indicating the welding direction so whenever we can uh, rotating the tool into the uh, anti-clockwise at that time the direction is from starting to the ending means to we can say that from the top to the bottom and in the case of the uh, reverse direction uh, tool rotation we can find it from bottom to the top so here it is wood actually the friction stir welding is now uh, we can say also says that that friction stir welding is doing a joining process it is a one type of a solid state joining pro process which cannot use any kind of a filler metal 
So if we can go on through the other types of the welding process like uh, uh, resistance welding or arc welding or uh, uh, gas welding kinds of the things at that time we can uh, say that the filler metal is required. So here the tool can rotate, tool can generate the heat and it can join the two materials or the two plates of the material. It may be possible the plates are the rectangular or the circular or any other kinds of the shapes. Right now, what are the parameters affected in the case of the friction stir welding? So definitely, as we are knowing that the material is the first and the topmost thing which can affected in the case of the any kind of the welding process. So before selecting the material, we need to check its property, its melting point, thickness and the composition. After finding the uh, particular material application, so for which application this material will be used, we can uh, go on through the clamping and the machinery, which types of the machine can done this particular welding process. So in the case of the machine here, basic three things required, we can change it for getting the optimum parameter, which is the transverse speed, axial force and the rotational speed. So as we are knowing that uh, basic two types of the manufacturing processes are there, whether it is a material removing or material joining. So it's required the basic three parameters, tool can rotate, tool can travel, tool can touch with the workpiece. If the tool cannot travel, then the workpiece can travel. If the tool cannot rotate, then the workpiece can rotate and tool can touch with the workpiece or the workpiece, uh, workpiece can touch with the tool, both are equal. So if these three basic fundamental can fulfill then and then the material removing process may occur. Now in the case of the material joining, also similar kinds of the things required for the same. So in this case, we can say that if clamping design is not a proper in the machine, at that time what happened? we cannot find a get exit result of a welding. So for that, we need to design a clamp for that uh, the clamp geometry we need to design and we need to fix a clamp force. Then the uh, one another parameter which is most important as far as the friction stir welding point of view is concerned, which is related to the tool design. So how we can design the tool? So for that, uh, uh, definitely uh, I will give you the brief idea about the design of the tool. But the parameter affected uh, for the tool design as the flake angle, rake angle, pin geometry, materials, uh, with types of the material that we are uh, using uh, for particular welding joint. Definitely we are knowing that when uh, base metal uh, we are choosing and when we are choosing a tool material at that time, tool is quite harder than the base metal then and then the material removal or the material joining process will occur then solder geometry and the solder to pin diameter ratio now what do you mean by the solder to pin diameter ratio for that we need to understand uh, pin geometry that we will discuss after some time now uh, after uh, doing a welding for that uh, i would like to uh, give you the idea about the figure at that time, once uh, this uh, welding direction from tool rotated anti-clockwise from uh, one side to the another side, at that time, uh, one welding uh, welding type of the uh, areas can be generated with use of this process. So for that, which is called as the uh, which is called as the uh, welded area, which can be divided into the basic four component. So here, as per the figure so on, it can be divided into the four type. First one, unaffected material. Second one, heat affected zone. Third one, thermomechanically affected zone. And last one, weld nugget. So what do you mean by the unaffected material? Whenever we are uh, want to join the two uh, square plate, at that time we can say that the both the plate are not uh, connected each other so basic gaps that we can find whether it is a 0 0.05 mm or 0.1 mm basic gaps that we can find whenever we are clamp it 
so due to that whenever this uh, tool can rotate into the clockwise or the anti clockwise direction the uh, we can find the advancing and retracting side it can go on through from one side to the another side at that time at the end of the plate at the right end of the plate and the left end uh, right, uh, left end of the plate we can find the unaffected material over there so it can not be heated as much as compared to the another three zones second one is the heat affected zone so here the b portion which is related to the near to the thermomechanically affected and the weld negate so we can find some of the temperature in the case of the heat affected zone and third c thermomechanically affected zone so basically we are uh, we are working on the thermomechanically affected and the weld negate portion so thermomechanically affected zone have uh, having a find a different granule size and its microstructure study will give us an idea that how this uh, atomic bonding can be changed in a particular zone also definitely we can we are knowing that whenever in any type of welding process weld negate having a different kinds of the compositions that we have find and its uh, different characteristics of a particular uh, microstructure that we have find in the case of the weld negate now uh, what are the barriers advantages and the limitation of the uh, uh, limitations uh, of the friction stir welding so first barrier of the friction stir welding special clamping system necessary whenever we are going through the fsw friction stir welding in lathe machine then the clamp, uh, different clamping and design required whenever we can go on through the milling machine then also the different clamping design required whenever we are choosing higher amount of the tensile strength material or higher uh, lower hardness material of a base material as a base material at that time also the different clamping uh, mechanism required so uh, each and every aspect that we need to consider whenever we have to design uh, any kinds of the clamp for the friction steer welding process now uh, one another barrier is the only simple joint geometry can be possible like a butt joint we cannot uh, we cannot uh, process fsw with the other types of the joint and third one is the corrosion protection is needed why it is required because no filler metals are there if we are going through the air fsw means air friction stir welding at that time it is not a major issue but we are if we are going with the immerse fsw means the underwater friction stir welding at that time corrosion protection is a major thing that we uh, need to taken into the consideration now uh, what are the advantage over the uh, fusion welding process of a fsw so as per the current trend in the technology we can say that the low distortion even in a long weld so basically it is a uh, uh, feasible in the small welding applications now uh, means a small size welding uh, Uh, work piece are there then it is uh, quite feasible second one is the excellent mechanical property is proven by the fatigue and the tensile so we can get a, a good tensile property no arc no fume no porosity low shrinkage so shrinkage defect that we cannot find compared to the other welding processes can operate in all the positions as per the requirement uh tool is also a non consumable which is one of the most uh, uh, most important parameter that will affect the cost of the welding then the no filler wire or gas shielding is required for a particular process so these are the advantage of a friction stir welding uh, compared to the fusion other fusion welding processes now what are the limitation of a friction stir welding over a fusion welding processes so as per the present scenario we can say that the workpiece must be rigidly clamped so as we have uh, already discussed in the barrier that we have to design our clamp as per the uh, with taken into the consideration all parameter of the choosing material uh, capacity of the machine 
whether it is a milling or a lath, but we need to uh, take into the consideration of the capacity of the machine. So we need to clamp the workpiece rigidly, otherwise we cannot find an exact result. Then uh, one another limitation is the key holes at the end of uh, each weld. Whenever we can up our tool, at that time we can find a key hole kinds of the error in the case of a friction stir welding, whether it is a air FSW or the <clears throat> underwater FSW or we can say immerse FSW. We cannot make a joints that require the metal deposition. So it is a, one of the um, major disadvantage in the case of the friction stir welding. Uh, that we cannot make joints that require the metal depositions. So uh, this metal itself can melt it and it can join together. Uh, last disadvantage is the less flexible than the fusion welding process. How we can say that it is a less flexible? Because uh, the so many researchers are going through the research, a particular uh, FSW processes, which is used in the different applications. So definitely we will see the application wise and how it can be conducted. So it may be more feasible to you to understand the basic fundamental of the friction stir welding. But uh, as it uh, uh, particular kinds of the process, which is ongoing under research, that's why we can say that it is not uh, uh, flexible compared to the other fusion welding processes. Now, what are the application? So whenever we are going to the uh, going to uh, do any case study, at that time we need to choose one of the application. Then we need, we need to select a material. Then we need to select a tool that can weld for a particular material. Then we need to select a machine. Then we need to design a clamping device. Then we need to do a, a selecting of a process parameters. Then after we need to decide the output parameters and we then we at last we need uh, we get optimum parameters for a particular application which is suitable for a single or multiple applications. So friction stir welding is used mainly in the shipbuilding and the marine industry. So basically in the case of aluminium 2000 series and the 7000 series are used in uh, shipbuilding and the marine industry applications. Then the uh, second applications are the aerospace industry. So uh, basically the aluminum 6000 series are used in the case of the uh, aerospace industry. So shipbuilding and the marine which is related to the immerse FSW means underwater fix and stir welding processes. Whenever the aerospace industry in which we can say that we are going to conduct uh, air FSW process. Then the third one is the railway industry in which uh, container bodies and the goods wagon which can be uh, joint with the friction stir uh, welding. Then the land transportation uh, for that we can say that the mobile cranes, the engine chassis which can possibly uh, joint with use of the FSW, air FSW and other industrial sectors like uh, electric uh, motor, housing, refrigeration panel, white goods, uh, cooking equipment, kitchen, furniture and the gas tanks uh, and gas cylinders. These are all are related to the application of the friction stir welding. Now, uh, first application friction stir welding is ship building and the marine industry or we can say that the aerospace industry. So nowadays the research is going on that if we are carried out the experiment uh, in a lathe or a milling machine or we can say that the VMC machine in the ship building on the marine industry. So how it can be used in the actual application. So for that the, uh, some of the researchers are uh, trying to work on it. Now, uh, uh, I would like to give you the, some hint related to the literature review. So uh, I would directly move towards the summary of the literature. Then the, some of the researchers did research in a friction stir welding and they have found that the, this particular process is a, uh, free from uh, defect. Uh, in this particular process, defects are free from the aluminum weld. 
so we can say that the conventional milling machine can be successfully modified into a friction stir welding machine how it can be possible that i will guide you later on uh, but uh, uh, i did a particular thing and i do the experiments that were uh, that's uh, that's why i am damn sure that it can be possible that conventional milling machine can be converted into the friction stir welding machine so some of the modifications uh, surely required for the same but uh, uh, we need to take a uh, capacity of the machine so whenever we can uh, modify a particular machine before that we need to check uh, the capacity of a conventional milling machine if it is uh, higher than and then we can uh, need to convert it otherwise uh, our experiments setup will be not used to do a friction stir weld now uh, one another uh, comparison that they have find researcher have find that the mig tig Uh, are routinely used for joining aluminium alloy and compared to it uh, friction stir welding give us the better result in case of uh, consideration of uh, cooling from liquid phase uh, if we can avoid it then uh, fsw give us the better result also the fsw process parameter that they have taken like a uh, tool solder diameter tool pin diameter tool rotational speed welding speed axial force as we have already discussed whenever we have to join any kinds of the material or remove the any kind of the material so basic two types of the things uh, uh, are uh, going with the mechanical engineering whether material joining or material removing so in the, both the cases tool can touch with the workpiece tool can rotate and the tool can travel so it may be converted into the some of the mechanical parameter like a rotational speed welding speed and the axial force Uh, this is are some of the deciding parameter we can say that now uh, what do you mean by the immerse fsw so whenever we are comparing the immerse fsw with the conventional fsw at that time we can say that the hardness value of the uh, underwater friction stir welding joint is quite uh, normal or we can say that it can be due to the cooling effect uh, we can find uh, improvement in the hardness compared to the air fsw in the case of immerse fsw now uh, last point in the case of the summary that the researcher did is that the immerse fsw hardness of the thermomechanically affected zone as we have uh, gone through the uh, as we have gone through the basic four points of the zone uh, unaffected zone then unaffected zone and heat affected zone thermomechanically affected zone and the weld nugget so in the case of the immerse fsw we can say that uh, heat affected zone uh, can be remarkably improved and uh, liquid cooling in a particular property or joint property we can find a lower hardness and the higher tensile strength as we have required so which is related to the basic kinds of the process fundamentals of the uh, immerse fsw compare with the uh, air fsw right so uh, now this is all about the uh, what the researcher did in the research now what i did uh, for a particular uh, experiment that uh, one of the milling machine uh, bfw company milling machine and the model name is the uf1 which is available in the nirma university currently also so on that i have tried to modify it and uh, try to make uh, this modified this machine milling machine into the friction stir welding machine so for that what need uh, to modification what need to do or modify a particular machine into the friction stir welding machine so for that i need to do a clamp uh, cl i need to prepare a clamping device i need to modify uh, this this one is the con um, universal milling machine so we can convert it is uh, in a horizontal milling and the vertical milling both so in this particular case uh, we can go on through the modification of the tool so tool design tool geometry that we need to uh, redefine and also the in the bed we have to prepare one of the clamping device so this is the figure of the uh, what actually i did uh, in this experiment or in this welding process so definitely some of the parameters uh, that uh, uh, so on into the uh, 
uh, shown into the screen that uh, what actually this capacity of this machine is there. So I would like to point it out, uh, friends, that uh, if uh, this machine having a range of the speed or number of feed, which is less than uh, 10, or we can say that the number of range is less than 1000 RPM or less than 1500 RPM, then it cannot be converted into the friction stir welding process because we are not using any kind of the filler material in the case of the FSW uh, joints. So how it can be carried out? So both the plates are joining together and uh, it can melt it, uh, itself, tool can rotate it, it can melt, uh, melt itself and this FSW process occur. So that's why if the lower RPM uh, range of milling machine is there, so possibly it cannot be converted for a particular application as a friction stir welding. Now, uh, whenever we are selecting the material at that time, definitely we need to choose what is the particular application. So whenever I did the experiment, so I need to focus that for a aerospace industry. So as we have already discussed that the 2000, 7000 and the 8000 series, which is uh, are quietly used in aerospace industry. So these are the series of aluminum alloy. So aluminum alloy of a 2000, 7000 and 8000 series, which are used for the aerospace industry. So I have selecting one of the aluminum alloy material, AA8011. So this AA8011 material having a, uh, characteristics and what are the uh, composition which is shown into the uh, screen. Now, before selecting uh, a particular size of a workpiece plate, we need to define that uh, what are the our output parameter how we can find whether this uh, weld is good or not so definitely the tensile strength and the hardness is one of the most important output parameter uh, whenever we are considering any kind of welding not for a friction stir welding only so in the case of the friction stir welding uh, we need to prepare uh, uh, tensile strength uh, for uh, choosing a tensile strength or for finding a tensile strength of a particular welded material, we need to uh, do a design in such a way that to follow a ASTM standard. So basically in the case of that uh, FSW, ASTM E8M04 standard can use to prepare a workpiece for tensile strength as a specimen. Now, how we can design our tool? Definitely uh, one another parameter hardness is also there. So in the case of uh, any type of welding, if the tensile strength is quite higher or which is nearer or which is nearer around 60 to 70 percent of a base metal, then it is a quite uh, acceptable. And in another aspect, we can say that the, if the hardness is quite lower compared to the base metal hardness, then it is a uh, uh, widely acceptable. Right. Uh, now, second point, uh, how we can define or design our tool for the friction stir uh, weld material. So for that uh, designing the friction stir welding material or the tool, we can say that the um, for the aluminum is a uh, aluminum material having a tensile strength property of uh, 110 megapascal around. So that's why I have chosen H13 tool steel, which is a quite higher compared to the particular uh, particular uh, base material. So its hardness is also higher. So base material hardness is around uh, 60. And in the case of the uh, our tool hardness, which is around 95. So which can be easily weld or which can easy to melt the material together. Now whenever we are going through the conducting any kinds of the experiment that at that time we need to choose a, a process parameter first so in this particular friction stir welding during uh, my ex experiments i have chosen a rotational speed welded speed or we can say the transverse mm -hmm. speed axial force and out of tool geometry any of the one that we can choose so out of this four, uh, five uh, basic things for the tool, me, uh, tool geometry, 
means the major and minor diameter ratio, pin length, tool shoulder diameter, pin diameter, and tool inclined angle. I have chosen only tool shoulder diameter. So from that, uh, if we are choosing a four input parameter and we are having a three output parameter like a uh, uh, first one tensile strength, second one hardness, and the third one microstructure study. So at that time, uh, so many, uh, if we want to do a, a experimental setup for optimizing a process parameter, at that time, so many uh, processes are available. We can go on through the Taguchi method. We can go on through the artificial neural network. We can go on through the response surface methodology or full factorial design also we can use. So out of that, uh, I have chosen the uh, Taguchi based gray relational analysis for finding optimum parameter for a particular condition, for a particular machinery, for a particular application of a aluminum AA8011 which is widely used in the aerospace industry. So for that, uh, these are the some of the figure that I have did a particular experiment uh, as one of the uh, major disadvantage that we have discussed that uh, one pin hole that we have find at the last. So which is the which is not uh, we can find in uh, general uh, other types of the welding processes. So this is the one of the major um, disadvantage in the case of the friction stir welding. So these are related to the different trials. So in uh, each and every trials before selecting a process parameter or the various range of the process parameter, I did a particular trials and then I can need to vary a tool shoulder diameter, rotational speed, welding speed and the axial force and try to uh, find uh, particular things that uh, what are the our uh, basic uh, optimum parameters or conditions that we can find for getting a better weld material. So now how we can do uh, uh, optimum optimization of a particular process parameter in the case of FSW. Definitely this chart is used for any kind of the optimization uh, that we need to do with use of the Taguchi. So this chart uh, showing us a uh, one by one process for the uh, optimization, uh, finding optimization process parameter steps uh, in the case of the Taguchi, definitely it can go on through the ANOVA analysis of variance and the gray relational grade Then we need to calculate for the same. I think major of you are knowing about the process for the optimization. Uh, definitely we can go on through the Taguchi only. We cannot uh, discuss due to the time limitation about the artificial neural network or the response surface methodology or any other uh, kinds of the optimization techniques. So if I am having a four uh, input parameter, uh, likewise a tool shoulder diameter, rotational speed, transfer speed and the axial load. And if I am having a three output parameter like a tensile strength, micro hardness and the power input. So four input and the three output. So basic two types of the orthogonal array is possible in the case of the Taguchi method. First one is the L9 and the L27. So in the case of the L9, only nine experiments are required. In the case of the L27, uh, 27 experiments need to carry out for uh, getting optimum result. So I did uh, uh, did the experiment with use of the L9 orthogonal array. So here in this table, you can find that the, how the combination of the input parameters that I have chosen during the experiment and what actually the results that I have uh, I already achieved for tensile strength, micro hardness and the power input. So for getting the optimum parameter, these are the process that we have carried out. And at the last, uh, I found that the optimum parameter for a particular uh, uh, condition of the ANOVA that fulfill uh, by the processing of the friction stall welding experiments I found the optimum level of the parameter then the which parameter is the best for this particular machines. Definitely uh, which can not directly apply into the particular aerospace industries, but at least it will give us the immense idea related to the what are the limitations of a particular machine and how we can get our exit result in a particular process. 
so uh, these are the uh, some of the graphs that how the uh, one of the input parameter uh, or individual input parameter like a tool shoulder diameter rotational speed welding speed and the axial force can affect to uh, my my particular uh, output parameters so for the same we can say that these input parameters uh, uh, graph versus the our means value uh, it can be prepared with use of the different softwares. Uh, uh, so many softwares are available to prepare a particular graph. Now, uh, whenever we can go on through the uh, go on through the immerse friction stir welding, means the underwater friction stir welding. At that time, uh, we need to add one of the important things uh, in our uh, setup of the clamping device or uh, we can say that the uh, workpiece setup. So at that time we are using uh, K type of a thermocouple in the regular different interval of a particular, <coughs> a particular weld clamp uh, base material. So aluminum 8000 series material AA8011. From that I, and I uh, did experiments and from Advancing side to retracting side, I have put in a different four uh, locations. I have found out a four different location and put in K type of a thermocouple to getting the result that how heat can be affected into the various location in during this friction stir welding. So definitely uh, this thermal history uh, that we can find, uh, which is shown into the graph, whenever we are conducting experiment with the four. 15 mm tool shoulder diameter, uh, 1400 mm RPM rotational speed, and 80 millimeter per minute welding speed and 2.5 kilo Newton axial force. Uh, during air, it is also possible. Now, uh, uh, whenever we are going through the any kinds of the welding, definitely its microstructure effect a lot. Means its uh, bonding can be changed. So definitely, this microstructure uh, can. Uh, find out with the different processes. So with use of the optical microscopy that we are knowing very well, then also some of the uh, other uh, microstructure uh, checking possibilities are there like a SEM and TEMs process, like a scanning electron microscopy and the transmission electron microscopy. So these are the image related to the scanning electron microscopy. So actually the microstructure uh, study is a vast field as we are knowing very well about it that uh, it is the field related to the metrological engineering so whenever we can uh, go on through this particular uh, uh, optimum parameter effect at that time we can say that in this figure microstructure show that the small ragged and the recrystallized elongated grain so cleavage portion is quite higher in the right hand side topmost uh, figure of the microstructure and it will give us the uh, small rigged and the recrystallized elongated grain due to the higher heat generation in the case of the friction stir welding. So this uh, right hand side top figure which is related to the uh, which is basically related with the that's why it will give us the and many figures to the unaffected zone, mechanically affected zone, etc. Right? So, these are the some of the uh, process parameters that is carried out. Also, now how we can check the thermal uh, efficiency or the thermal distribution of the top surface of the workpiece. So, definitely, with use of the ANSYS software, we can check the thermal, uh, with use of the thermal modeling in the case of the ANSYS software, we can check how it can be affected. And uh, the figure and the graph shows uh, its indication that the weld line of a particular uh, distance from uh, starting point to the ending point, how it can be reached and what are the effect of the thermal generation during the throughout the welding. At last, I would like to conclude that uh, whenever we can go on through the uh, friction stir welding in uh, as I did a particular experiment or I carried out a particular experiment, at that time we can find the 60% tensile strength in the case of the air FSW compared to the base metal and 76% in the case of the immerse FSW means the underwater FSW uh, compared to the base metal. 
also we can find the optimum parameter definitely uh, if uh, instead of l9 orthogonal array if i am going through the l27 then the optimum parameter we can get a exact result but uh, due to the time limitation if i go on through the l9 orthogonal array at that time also i found the optimum parameter which is best in the case of the tool shoulder diameter rotational speed transverse speed and the axial load now when we can uh, go on through this uh, experiment at that time we can find that the, whenever we are applying the lower axial force and a higher welding speed and lower rotational speed it will give us the insufficient heat and we can generate a poor, poor plastic flow of the metal and it can cause some defect into the joint so one defect already we are knowing at the end of the joint we can find a pin or a point uh, then also on, uh, some another defects that we can find in this particular size also uh, one another conclusion that we have already discussed during the discussion of microstructure that we can find a small red recrystalline and elongated grain form in the air fsw because the higher value of the heat regeneration in the case of the friction stir welding whenever we are discussing about the immerse fsw at that time we can find lower heat generation compared to the air fsw because this process is going on into the under water and the last conclusion that i would like to conclude it that the find impulse and the are characteristics of the purely ductile fractures and features validate the higher ductility in the case of the microstructure effect so these two types of the arrangement that we are going with which is air fsw and immerse fsw both the specimens give us the different result so these are related to the conclusion that what i did uh, in this particular fsw process now what are the possibilities definitely so many researchers are uh, carried out the research or the, so many researchers uh, going with the research uh, with the same philosophy but uh, what are the future scope so even here we are taking the aluminium alloy as a application of a Uh, aerospace industry so in the single pass uh, we can use the more combination of a process parameter so this is called as the uh, investigation uh, can also be carried out that uh, with the same material we can do a multi pass also or if we are carried out the experiment with the single pass but we can use more combination of the process input uh, parameters so it will give us the better result also we can say that uh, dissimilar kinds of the metal can also be possible means uh, uh, different kinds of the series if we are taking the 2000 series and the 8000 series of the aluminum alloy and we would uh, try to uh, do the experiments or try to join the two different dissimilar kinds of the plate also the steel and aluminum also be possible but uh, for that we need to check application whether it can be used or not if it will uh, not use in any of the uh, in future applications then uh, it no need to, to carry out or such kinds of the experiments then one another future scope is the overlapping uh, overlapping friction stir passes welding passes on the soundness and the changes in the microstructure and mechanical property of weld in aluminum alloy means after doing or carried out a one experiment means uh, welding can done through left hand side to the right hand side with the condition of the advancing uh, with taking into the consideration of the advancing side and retracting side both if we are doing a multiple pass and the overlapping overlapping of a, a single pass which called as a multiple pass fsw at that time how the microstructure react and what are the mechanical properties like a uh, uh, tensile strength and the hardness or the axial force affected in the particular case of the welded material this uh, that's it from my side uh, these are the reference that i have using to carry out particular experiments now if anyone having any kind of the question so please you may ask over to you joshi sir हेलो यस सर
Uh, uh, in some of the application, when it joint is the uh, in sum up application, the weld joint is replaced by the adhesive joint for this similar material joining process. Which method we should adopt and why? So for the dissimilar material, to compare, uh, hmm? uh, it is not possible to compare directly uh, because uh, whenever we are uh, discussing about the different uh, dissimilar material joining process, at that time, uh, for uh, such kinds of the application, we are not uh, fixing with the one of the application. For an example, whenever we are going through the any kinds of the solid uh, state joining process, at that time we are knowing that the friction stir welding, then the ultrasonic, then the diffusion, and the explosive. Four different possibilities are there. So, uh, in particular application, definitely ultrasonic can also be used. Diffusion can also be used. Explosive uh, welding process can also be used. And friction stir welding uh, process can also be used. So we need to check for which application, which ex, uh, which a particular process will give us the exact idea. So we cannot say particularly or perfectly, sir, that this particular process is used betterly in this particular uh, welding uh, <coughs> welding techniques. Yes, over to you, sir. Okay, uh, and. Uh Mm, and uh, what is the effect of depth of uh, concave or convex geometry is possible? So, so depth of cut uh, or we can say that the axial force is affected a lot in the case of the friction stir welding. Uh, so whenever we are uh, going with the advancing side, at that time if the thickness of the material is around 5 millimeter, it is a square plate then definitely the our depth of cut which is related to the less than the actual thickness of the material so if the thickness of the material is the 5 millimeter then definitely we need to carry out the experiment with the depth of the cut around 4.5 or less than that or nearby 4 millimeter so concax and the concave is also affected for a, a particular things uh, and uh, again, uh, there is some effect of tilt angle. Tool yes, sir. Surely, there was... uh, surely the tool design having uh, so many uh, effects uh, like a uh, rake angle, tilt angle, pin geometry, solder to pin diameter ratio and solder geometry. So tilt angle is also can be possible. But sir, uh, for that, we need to carry out a such experiment in the VMC. Uh, so in manual uh, milling machine, uh, it can be not be possible to tilt a tool. So it is the limitation of the machinery itself. So definitely. So it is one topic of research, no? Hello. So tilt angle uh, can uh, also the major parameter whenever we are selecting the our input parameter from the tool design. Okay, and uh, it is applicable to copper and zinc uh, type metal. Yes, sir. So many. Yes, sir. Yes, so many researchers are carried out the experiments for the dissimilar metals also. Uh, mm -hmm. As far as the, my knowledge in the University of the Cambridge and in researchers uh, are working with the dissimilar metals also. So it can be possible. But we need to and, uh, uh, take the, the consideration that uh, whether it can be applicable for a particular application or not. And it raises the bitterness yes, of the joint. So, okay, brittleness will be increased in that case. Okay, and uh, analysis or simulation type software is available. We can do analysis or uh, in ANSYS uh, uh, like software for assembly. Yes, sir. Uh, we can do the analysis, thermal uh, thermal analysis in the case of the ANSYS. So, also I did uh, uh, during my experiment a thermal analysis in the ANSYS kinds of the software. Uh, but uh, it required a uh, genuine source. So definitely if you are having a, it's a key version or the, if you are having a trial version, so it will not give us the exit results 
because this input parameter uh, which can affect it a lot for a particular results that's why we are required a genuine source of analysis so it may be possible to do a thermal analysis and uh, so as far as the tool design oh hello rathod sir please uh -huh. And I, I wanted to ask that uh, the tool is used. So, uh, have you gone through the any paper where the tool we are studied in FSW? Uh, so, actually, sir, uh, you really surprised that I found uh, one of the contact that are manufacturing the friction stir welding tool right now in Gujarat mm -hmm. in Rajkot region. Mm -hmm. So this particular fellow contacted me that uh, uh, they have uh, did the experiments of the tool wear. Uh, definitely mm -hmm. the wear uh, amount is quite less compared to the another uh, welding processes. Yeah. Welding. But uh, uh, particularly I have not found any kind of the research paper which is uh, working on the tool wear in this FSW process. Yes. But the, one of the supplier can go on through that. So uh, it may be possible that the uh, it is a one of the future of the one of the type of welding or solid yes, state yes. joining processes. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, hardness is affected. Uh, if workpiece hardness, what Joseph is asking, if the workpiece hardness is increases, increases, is there an effect on tool hardness? Sure, sir. Uh, if a workpiece can quite harder. At that time, definitely we need to choose a tool which is harder than the workpiece. Then and uh -huh. then material joining process can occur. Otherwise, it will not be uh, possible uh -huh. of any kinds of the material removal or material joining process. So it is the basic uh -huh. fundamental of uh, uh, mechanical or manufacturing processes. So uh -huh. definitely at the time of the choosing the tool, sir, uh, we uh -huh. need to go on through the hardness and the tensile strength of the workpiece both. Yes, sir. One okay, another question go. that I have found mm. from the chat that uh, how to select a cutting parameter of FSW. Uh, that, that I I, I asked question. Uh, sir, so actually whenever uh, we need to select a cutting parameter, at that time uh, two types of the things that we need to take into the consideration. First one, mm. uh, which parameter uh, can possibly uh, change in a particular machine, our existing machine. Mm. Okay, and a second things that we need to which parameter affected in a particular application. So mm. for if I am choosing the aluminium alloy for a uh, aerospace industry at that time, which parameter affects a lot and whether it is possible to change in my existing machine or not. So basic two types of the things that we need to take into the consideration whenever we are selecting a cutting parameter in the case of a air FSW or immerse FSW. Okay, is there any question, Joseph? Sai? No, no, not from my side. Okay, now can I sum up now? So I okay, would sir. like to thank. Uh, I would like to thank from bottom of my heart that uh, you are providing uh, such a great opportunity to share my uh, some of the few uh, experiments that I did uh, in past. So I am uh, really thankful to the management of a. Uh, RNG PAT Institute Bardoli. I am really thankful to the Vratra Joshi sir and the head of the mechanical department KB Rathor sir and also again thanks to Dr. Siddhar Sijadeja, director of uh, BH Gardi College of Engineering and Technology to providing uh, such a good platform. Over to you Rathor sir. Uh, I also would like to thank uh, you Professor Asis Kavar for spending your valuable time for our students as well as for the faculty members. I also would like to thank our management uh, and particularly Babu Kaka and uh, principal Dr. Latesh Chaudhary for providing such a wonderful e-platform for the students and viewers. I also would like to thank Professor V.C. Joshi, coordinator and assistant professor in uh, computer engineering department for handling the broadcast of the mechanical web webinar without any disturbances. And I also would like to thank uh, Dr. V.K. Joshi, Assistant Professor in Mechanical Engineering, 
for inviting you as an expert for this session last but not least i would like to thank the students faculty members who are with us continuously thank you all the viewers with us we will end this session thank you all be safe and stay at home thank you